Question number four, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister for Building and Housing. When the Prime Minister said first home buyers in Auckland might have to consider an apartment in order to get onto the property ladder, did he mean that the government supports the increased intensification now being considered by the independent hearings panel? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. The government's view has always been that Auckland needs to grow both up and out. The core reason Auckland housing prices have increased so dramatically since 2000 is that there have been vocal opponents to both greenfields as well as intensification who have been able to use the council planning and RMA legislation to stall both. Special housing areas are helping resolve this problem in the short term, but long term the answer is getting the unitary plan and the RMA reforms right. As the Prime Minister said on Monday, intensification makes sense broadly, but the Auckland Council and independent hearings panel needs to work through the detail on the extent and the areas where it's appropriate. That's right. Order. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. True that National Party members in the leafy eastern suburbs are in open revolt against the intensification plans being advocated by the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, and the Housing Minister. Right. It's right. doubtful whether there's much responsibility uh, for a National Party indeed, voters, but Mr. on that basis, I'll allow them indeed, to Indeed, Mr. Speaker. Question. Look, there's a range of views across Auckland. The views I find most contradictory are members opposite who have demanded that there be increased housing, and every time there's a new greenfield subdivision or there's a project like Three Kings, Labor is out there opposing it as hard as they can. And I simply say to members opposite, stop the moaning and the whinge and get on board with the government's program because we're solving the problems. Order. Order. Supp supplementary question, Dr. Panjit Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, what progress has the government achieved to date on increasing housing supply, intensification, and affordability in Auckland? Mr. Speaker. Order. Order. Mr. Speaker, firstly. Order. I haven't called the Minister yet. The Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Firstly, the pace of new home construction has increased by fourfold from 200 per month to now consistently over 800 per month. Secondly, the pace of new apartment and townhouse construction in Auckland has increased by sevenfold from 60 a month to 420 a month. In recent months, close to half the new dwellings being consented in Auckland are for apartments and townhouses. I'm also encouraged that housing affordability in Auckland over the past six months has improved as house prices have cooled and interest rates have fallen to 50-year lows. The House should welcome that a bank in New Zealand is now offering, for the first time in 50 years, interest rates of less than 4%. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. If the government is in favour of intensification, why then are senior National Party figures like Orake Local Board Chair Desley Simpson, Helensville aspirant Councillor Cameron Brewer and MP Simon O'Connor openly campaigning against intensification in the eastern suburbs? Mr Speaker. So far as his ministerial responsibility... Uh, the oh, Mr Speaker, the firstly, the uh, member misrepresents the position that I've heard from Simon O'Connor, which is actually very fair and representative of his constituents. What I'd like that member to explain is why the Labor chair of the board opposes the Three Kings development when I've had lectures from members of the Labor Party that support intensification and new apartments and townhouses in Auckland for years. Supplementary question, David Seymour. Can the minister name a city worldwide that has significantly improved housing affordability through a policy of intensification? Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the government's view, and in my view, if you look internationally, if you want to have greater housing affordability, you need to do both. You need to allow cities to grow, and that involves new greenfield development. But whether you look at the New Yorks, the Londons, or whether it be the Sydneys or the like, actually, 
you also need to provide for intensification, and that is why the government's view is that a balanced growth path of both is required. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Does he support increased intensification in Auckland's eastern suburbs and the North Shore? Uh, the Honourable Dr Nixon. Mr Speaker, yes, and if the member reads the government's submission to the independent hearing panels, we have made plain that we broadly support intensification. The discussion is to be had around where there's a pretty good consensus that it needs to occur around town centres and around transport hubs, and where there is a detailed debate as to how far it goes beyond that, our government has provided for an independent hearings panel. It will listen to submissions and decide on the balance of where that needs to occur. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. If Auckland's unitary plan is delayed, will he follow through on his earlier threats to overrule Aucklanders? Or does he only do that to ordinary New Zealanders and not to potential campaign donors? Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nixon. Uh, Mr Speaker, point of order. Point of order. I take offence at the member's last uh, remark in that question order. that was unnecessary. Order, order. This is actually quite a serious allegation that's been made. I, order. I'm going to invite the member to re-ask the question, but there is no suggestion, there can be no suggestion, that a decision being made by any minister is because of potential funding. Ask the question again. If the been... unitary plan is delayed, Will he follow through on his earlier threats to overrule Aucklanders? Or does he only do that to ordinary New Zealanders and not the ruling elite? The, on order, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, the current planning rules for Auckland date back to 1993 and each of the previous councils. It is hugely important for Auckland that we get a unitary plan in place. We have the special housing areas legislation that we've been using for the last four years to override those old plans and actually get that fourfold increase in the rate of house build going on in that city. Now, the government's preference is to get a smooth transition from those special housing areas to the new Auckland Unitary Plan, and we'll continue to work with the Auckland Council to achieve that because it actually matters to the very real issue of housing affordability, of which I thought this House would collectively want us to address. Question. Oh, point of order, John O'Neillan. Oh, sorry. John. <laughs> I, ap I apologise immediately to John O'Neillan. <laughs> but a uh, point of order, the Honourable Gary Brownlee. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order, can we um, have the point of order? You hadn't corrected yourself there. I might have started singing the Hallelujah Chorus, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Or slim down. Uh, um, the final comment in that question from uh, Mr. Twyford. Uh, more or less implied that there was influence being uh, exerted on a member from outside the House. And for a long, as long as this House has existed, that's been an inappropriate uh, way of, uh, of expressing anything or an in inappropriate accusation. You let him off with a previous uh, worse offence, but I do think we need to watch it that uh, those sorts of things aren't added into questions uh, and, and effectively bring the whole House into disrepute by virtue of those occasions. I, I Order. I thank the Minister. The first uh, question I did certainly find objectionable, uh, and uh, I gave the member a chance to rephrase it. He then used words comparing ordinary New Zealanders with the ruling elite. I don't think that added to the quality of the question, but I don't think in any way I could have ruled it out as being unparliamentary or against the rules of Parliament. Question number five. Oh, sorry, is this a point of order? Or? Supplementary question. Oh, I apologise. Supplementary question. Um, Madam Fox. <laughs> Kia ora, Mr Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister. Uh, what is the Minister doing to uh, address the issues of the whanau from Ifu Matau, whose area has been designated as a special housing zone? The Honourable Speaker, Dr. Nick Smith. the specific decisions on that site have been made by the Environment Court, and it would be inappropriate for me to overrule a decision that has been made by the Court. The owner of that property uh, is Fletcher Residential. 
They have indicated that they're happy to sit down and to talk with some of the Māori groups uh, that are concerned. The member has made representations to me on those lines. I'd be happy to facilitate that because I think there is the capacity on that site to come to a common sense solution. This time, question number five, John O'Neill. Oh,